morning. How you doing today? Welcome to Life with Belson. I'm your host, Belson. Today on the Belson Show, we're going to start reassembling the front end of the drinker side of the truck, which is the passenger side, Captain. I just woke up, so you got to bear with me, but we're going to start by pressing in the lower ball joint on the old Chevless Silverado's 87 square body. Now, just so you know, before I start this video, I never claim to be a mechanic, so bear with me, Captain. I'm a glass man, not a mechanic. But I can sure the figure this out. That's for damn sure. So, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take this off and this off. We are. Just like that. And we'll take this out, maybe. I think I might need the jack to get that out. Holy, I'm weak this morning, Jim. Oh, you know what happened? I put the sway bar back on the other side. It's locked me in. We got a lock going on here. Hold on, you're going for a ride for a second here. You're hanging out on the jack today. Oh, we're just gonna catch it. Like, I mean, just. There we go. Okay. So now that we have that out, we get some play back in the old doodad. Now I got a box of tools here, and of course, all these tools are for uh, something we're doing right now. Hope you enjoy this, because this is pretty good, the way this works. Sure, you can throw it in the freezer and then just hammer it in, but I'm gonna maybe use the right tool for the job. Hey, what? <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Now when you're doing this, make sure you don't put the grease fitting in until after you get the ball joint pressed in. Because you could run into some issues here, you could. And we're running into one right now where the truck's too damn low. But we'll get her in, don't worry. And then we'll, there we go, we got her. Look at that, yeah. Now I'll just take my trusty doodad. Lock her in. She's already going, I can feel her. Straight. Actually, it goes in pretty nice, big time. Just like it's almost supposed to. There she is. There you go. So there's not much to that. So we're done with that tool. Would you look at it? I would. So now that's it, we can put this on. We can give that a couple taps over top. Careful. There we go. Easy. Lower ball joint done. So now that I've done the lower ball joint, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna tighten the shock up because it's easier to get to now than later. So we're gonna need one of these. Could be that one too, let me check. No, it was the first one. We had it right the first time. So now that's on, we can take my air gun and we'll just get it rolling in with this. Wrong one. Why wouldn't it? What size is that? 18 millimeter. So we need an 18 millimeter in the other size. Or I can use number 21 hand cocker here. Where is it? Where's my Torque Master 3600? Here it is. Let's throw this into it. A little bit of overkill, but hey, we'll get her. <coughs> oh yeah, watch this boys. Those people. the best way to mount a shock to the frame it gets them pretty tight in there pretty quick so next what we got to do tighten this up now to do that we're gonna need one of these probably there it is right there and we can probably use mr hey how you doing ratchet because last night i killed myself on all the hands. oh yeah how you doing Daryl? all right there we go so that's done so that's all there is to tighten up the upper ball joint so now we need to the coil spring in who wants to work on that? Let me know in the comments below. Cause this is a real bitch to get in. That's the first thing in the morning when you're tired. So I'll get it started. And then, what the hell? What are you doing? Push, lift, push, push. Oh, what am I hitting here? Oh, I'm hitting the frame. Hey, how you doing? Ooh, hey. Ooh. Oh. And I think I moved the truck because the jack stands in my way. Like, how is that even possible to be in my way? Oh well, it is. That's bottom line. Jack the truck up a little bit and move that jack stand. Well, all we're gonna have to be able to do here. We'll go for the highway on her. Oh, hold on. You dizzy yet? I'd be. You think we can make it to that pad? Let's pick the highest part of the truck. I don't think it's gonna be high enough. Oh, come on. No, we're maxed out. Isn't that great? How perfect is that? Oh, maybe not. Oh, we do have enough. So move that over. And hopefully that will give us enough. Okay, ready? Oh, yeah. oh I'm scratching all my new paint. Frick, why wouldn't I? There it is. Not in the right spot, but there it is. Now we just gotta turn it. Turn it and get it in the pod. There's a pod up top that you gotta get her set into. Holy, that thing's seen better days up there. It's all bent to going on up there? Oh, it's in. Don't 
something that's in, eh? Not they say. So there we go, that's in. So we'll take this bolt out next. So we've got the movie for this one because this one is gonna take the jack a lot. So we'll throw the jack under the control arm. Now like I said, make sure you don't have the grease fitting in. Then make sure you don't bang the jack off your VA kit killer. Look at her go, Jim. Something's working. We'll slide her on the bottom joint. Look at that, I stopped just in time. And we'll get a bottom bolt started. Put as many turns as you can on her. And then we'll jack up some more. You can only go up until the truck starts to lift anyways. So now you just take the top one, push her down, wiggle her in. There it goes. Put a bolt on it. And there you go. So now we'll tighten her up real quick. I always like to snug them up before you take the weight off the truck. I should put drift uh, spindles on this thing. Here we go with drifting. So now we'll take the top one and do the same thing. Remember, when you're doing this, the brake caliper has got to go through the goddamn control arm. I'm glad I remember that before I tighten that up. Oh God, burn down a little bit. Here we go. Yeah, this is got to go through here like that. I tried to get it through after and no go on that oh. It just won't happen, Captain. And I don't feel like unhooking the caliper. If you feel like unhooking the caliper, then do it the other way. I don't at all. I'm glad I caught that. I forgot to paint the back side of that caliper. Not so damn good. Let's tighten this up instead of loosen it. That doesn't feel like the right size at all. Does that ever make you wonder why they use so many different sizes? Because it sure makes me wonder sometimes, I tell you. Got about 10 different sizes for this job. There we go. So now we're gonna need the pin. Whichever way it went. There it is. Figures right there. <laughs> Slide the pin in and bend her over. There we go. Now the bottom one, which is right here. So now we gotta find the hole, which is right there. So we gotta do a damn near half a turn here almost by the looks of it, which is fine with me. <laughs> Where are you? Am I not seeing you? I'm oh, right there. Frank, a little bit more. <laughs> there it is. Slide the pin through. Let's slide it through the other way so we can bend it. There we go. Bend her over, Captain. Now we can let the weight off the truck. So we're doing good here so far. We got the spindle in and mounted, we got the ball done in and mounted. We'll grease everything after it's all in and complete. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the shock before we get the caliper and everything else in the way. And you can probably see the shock. Hopefully you can see the shock. Let me put this in first so I don't lose it. Okay, how about I just take it out? Is that better? How about going the right way this time? I should take these fittings out of the old ball joints in case I ever get a bad fitting. You guys ever do that? Save the fittings? I think I might do that. I never thought about it that way. There we go, that's in. So now we need to put the bolt through the shock. I think I gotta take this back off because I thought it was easier to go the other way. I think it is. Let's do that. Let's sing that back off. So put the shock on the bottom first because it's easier and trust me it is. I wouldn't lie to you guys. I wouldn't lie to you. Why would I, right? We'll hopefully nail this thing with this maybe. Oh, that's reverse. Is you want to clean off your brake sliders of course like we always do on a brake job now the only other thing that we have a problem with with these uh, drop spindles is they move the brake caliper from i think it's here to here so what happens is this line ends up being right in the line of the ball joint just put one in or two in if you can get them in yeah see i can't because oh i just barely got started and take something and just bend the uh the brake line out of the way very carefully now just so you know, I ain't gonna grease up the brakes or anything like that because we're gonna end up putting new brake shoes on and stuff like that. So I'm not uh, greasing any of the sliders or anything right now because I gotta take all this back apart. So there we go, just slightly bend it, get it out of the damn way. I thought for sure I needed new calipers last night. I was like, well these calipers don't work. It says it works with a stock caliper. This ain't working. And that's why, it was that reason. So it was a really stupid reason. It really pissed me off. Let's get the router on. The router's right behind here. Let's freaking hit that thing. Throw some grease on her, Jim. I think I might need more grease to finish this job. Get low on the old grease gun situation. So just so you know, the stock calipers do fit on these spindles. Ah, yeah. Look at the mess. It's awesome. Nothing like a greasy mess. Hey, I rotated my calipers. I'm pretty sure this is the driver's side. That's okay. Who cares? I don't. I don't even know it really matters. Nice. Pin. See if I can find the hole. Oh, look at that. Fell right in. Yeah, my grease gun is not working too good. Holy. Better re grease gun all these fittings because that thing is pumping shit. There we go. 
Right or on? Now, C-clamps. I just remembered, I let out my C-clamp and it never came back. Go figure. I have no idea who borrowed that. I remember letting it to somebody. If you remember, you have a C-clamp right back, would you? Frig. That's why I'm done letting tools out. I've lost so many damn tools that way, it's not even funny. Thank God I have this tool here from Stevie to push my caliper hole back in. Now make sure when you're pushing this in, you make sure you release your cap up there on your brake booster or you'll just pop it right off. And a lot of you that are watching this will probably know that already, but hey, some of you that are watching this might not friggin' know that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm pushing the caliper back in. There's a piston there that pushes the brakes against the router. If you push that back in, it goes in a lot easier and back together a lot easier. So I would suggest doing that, but just go nice and easy and careful and gentle. You don't have to, you know, hammer it. Just squeeze it in nice and gently. Friggin' right, you better. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna attempt to put shitty brake pads on this thing, because the one brake pad doesn't have a lock clip, so it wants to keep falling out as you're putting it in. That's why I said I gotta take these back off and get anyway. But we wanna get it on the ground and check her out, don't we? I do. Leave a comment down below if you do. Don't forget to tighten up that inner tie rod end. Okay. There's one, there's two. What's the chance of that going in like that? Sign right in. Is it gonna work? I doubt it. Oh, there goes the brake pad already, see? Cursing this the whole time doing it. But we gotta get her in, because we gotta try her. Have faith, we'll get her in. After 100,000 tries, we'll get her in, Jim. You know what I should do is wire it. Ah. This is interesting. I don't know if anybody else has tried doing this or not without a lock pin. It's a real pain in the deck. I'd have to f say. So, look at it. Everything just wants to fall apart all the time. Look what's really going on, eh? I think we might have got her. Hold your tongue still. Oh, you bitch. Get up there. Stay where you're supposed to stay for a minute, would you? Why do you be such an asshole? Tell me, inquire minds want to know. Come on. No stress at all involved with the, doing this without the safety pin in there. Or lineup pin or whatever pin you want to call it. The pin you're supposed to have in there. Oh, now it's right wedged in there. Come on, get out of there, you bastard. Once you get the pin through, it will stay there. It's just a matter of getting the pin through it. All right, there we go. I think we got her, Jim. Maybe, maybe not. Hold your horses. There she goes. Oh yeah, look at that. Brake calibers on. Let's tighten that ball joint up first. If I'm not mistaken, we gotta go back the other way to do that. You know what I find really handy is if you bring a box with you, throw everything in the box, kinda works nice. Oh, we gotta put that back on too. Sway bar. Slow down, would you? So slot this on here, get this, and we'll get Mr. Torquemaster 2600-42. Slide that up there, hook this thing up. There we go, just like that. Where's my key? Where's my light? How far off am I? Okay, you see it. Why would the hole be facing me, eh? That wouldn't make sense. I think that's it right there. Holy shit, I got rid of the money, Jim. You wouldn't believe if I told you. There we go. Now, sway bar bushing. And Bob's running with some oil. Grease, I should say. Should probably buy some of these too. These are pretty much euchred. Those sway bar bushings. Probably slap some of them in it too. Oh, it just goes on. Oh, lay, how you doing? Bolts. Ah, uh, gone. Got some new ones we do. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we gotta look for everything again. This, with this, put that on here. We'll take this, we'll put that on here. And we'll take this bolt and we'll put that on here. And we'll take this, put that on here. Can you see? Probably not. Do you even know what I'm doing? Probably not. Do you want to see what I'm doing? Probably not. Sway bar, do dead. Think of a bobber. Air ball. Oh God, here we go. Air ball. And we must be going reverse. Sure are, we took the fucking thing off. What the hell did I take off? I thought I put something on last with that. I need a deep sock. I've already got tools missing in this kit and I haven't went any further than this truck. Do you guys ever do that? How the fuck is that even happen? There's one, there's two. Tie rod tight, tie rod tight, pinned, pinned, sway bar bushing, tight, pinned, tight, pinned, tight, 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 tight for now. Grease time. If I have enough grease, that's the next question. What happened? Oh, yeah. There, it might have enough grease now. Let's try it. No, nope, I'm out of grease, Jim. Well, I can't drive it. We can get it on the ground and see how it looks. I got to grease these fittings. No grease left. It's always the way it works. But hey, at least we'll see how it looks, eh, boys, girls, peoples? If I can get myself enough room to do anything here. Holy moly. Getting old, Captain. Come on, get the f out of there. 
Oh yeah, we gotta check alignment too. Lug nuts, moment of truth is coming. Is it gonna be level? That is a question. I dropped one of these lug nuts on the other side on the rim and made a mark. Couldn't believe it. It's gonna happen, I guess. That's what happens when you take rims on and off 10 times to do one job. They're gonna come off again, see? So I have a risk of doing it again. So we'll just uh, rat-a-tat-tat -tat it for now. All right. Yeah, the alignment's off. Not bad, but it's off. We'll adjust that later on. But let's get her on the ground. I'm pretty excited to see how it sits right now. Ready? Oh, dick. Definitely lower. Oh, that's killer. Let's get this thing out the door and have a look at her. Well, that looks a lot better, I'll tell you right now, but still not happy with the tires on it. The front tires still look way bigger than the back. We're gonna have to order some bigger tires for the back. Not right now, but she needs bigger tires in the back. But at least the truck sits normal now. It doesn't sit like a squatted truck. So that's pretty good. So there you go. Friggin' right. We got the draw spindles in. It's looking good. For a three inch drop spindle, the truck doesn't sit very low. That's because the tires are so damn big. And the back tires are so damn small, Captain. But we'll figure that out. We'll get her all straightened out. But I'm not worried about this year. This year we're gonna drive her. I don't care if it looks funny. But stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna work on the grill. I got some mesh for that grill. I took it all out. Took out the headlight bezels and pods. They need to be sandblasted and stuff. So on the next video we'll finish up that grill on it. But look at the stance on her. She's pretty good now, eh? Look how nice and beefy that back tire looks. Too bad it was a little bit bigger. It is what it is. The truck looks really good now the way it sits. Friggin' right it does. That looks awesome. Just a tad lower in the front, which I wanted. Is the truck level at least now? The truck has a lean. So it got the Chevy lean. No, it's still got the Chevy lean. Let me know if you guys have uh, found a way to get rid of the Chevy lean. This side just needs to go down like half an inch. That's it. Probably take the air out of the tire. That would do her, eh? Freaking right, that would do her. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like and hit the notification. Love y'all. And until the next one, you know what to do for now.